It's hard to imagine how we're going to make this ugly hunk of steel turn into something that resembles this, but we're going to give it a try. This truly is a pretty ugly piece of steel. It's got a taper to it because this hot rolled stuff isn't known to be the most precise. <laughs> Even the end of it has a divot to it. So this is quick and dirty steel. Luckily, it's way oversized, so we can turn all of that out of it. It's just a matter of this novice trying to figure it out and not messing it up along the way. This will pretty much be the same, but we're not gonna have this step. I think this must be for an earlier case or something. So we don't need that, and the back of it is just gonna be flush. There won't be this inner bore here to a shoulder that we have to worry about. All of this to fix the fact that this hole is about two thousandths of an inch too big. to do now is scallop out this area here because it leaves room for the thrust cutter. This one's kind of fun because due to limited visibility we're relying on our dials a whole lot more. Even set up a dial indicator to show when I've gone all the way back to this depth at the bottom of the bore. Get a little cutting oil in here. We'll dial in a light 20 thousandths cut. This isn't that deep of a cut, so I need to watch this close here. We're gonna go up to about 650 thousandths. Almost there. We'll shut her down right there. Back off my bar a little bit. And there we are, we are 20 thousandths closer to where we need to be. Once we get all the way out, we can use the boring bar to face the back of the bore here and make it nice and flat. It'll need to be that way for this bushing to work. The boring went well and we moved on to the taper. These bushings have to be tapered on the end because they just get shoved into a cylindrical bore and it's compression that holds them in place. An easy way to cut a short taper on a lathe is to use the compound rest. We just loosen this thing up and use the degrees down here to dial in our taper. Tighten it down, and then just advance the compound rest across the work. I measured the original bushing really just by taking its outside diameter here at the small end of the taper and here at the big end of the taper and doing a little bit of math. I've knocked this down to one degree and I'm getting a two degree taper, one degree here and one degree down here. I think it's gonna work. So we're gonna finish turning this down so that the outside diameter here is the same as the outside diameter here. Now I'm to the point where I'm looking forward to doing some finishing touches, like I'm gonna chamfer these edges here, then pulling it off of the truck and seeing if it actually works in a case. Okay, I think we're good. I've been messing with this bore and checking it out before I remove it from the lathe here because I've got it nice and centered. That's kind of been part of the work sequence here is to set it up in the chuck once and do everything that I need in this position. And so this is real nice here. It, it fits and it doesn't have the slop of the old bushing. Here's what may be a key difference between the bushing I made and the original bushing. The original bushing was cast. You can see before it got worn off, there was some, it says port a tool and then whatever the model number was there. And you can see the sand casting evidence of that there. And then they just machined it down. Well, I, I think cast iron has a little bit of oil in it. And I've even seen it described as self lubricating to some extent. 
and this mild steel is not. So, <laughs> I may have used the wrong material for this bushing. I think I've done what I can here, and I'm just going to have to do a real test in a case to know if I've got a problem or not. But that's a possible thing. The test fit is looking very good. And this collar, which we'll use to set thrust cuts with the feeler gauge method here, it sits true against the new bushing. I am very, very happy with this. Let's make the next one and then we'll be drilling some holes for all three. Okay, here we go. We're gonna see if we can turn this into one of these. mess around a little bit to get a decent finish. Something about this cut of steel and the bits that I was using and the speeds that I was running just wasn't happy. So I learned a little bit about experimenting with spindle speeds and cutting speeds and got a decent result anyway, accurate enough for what we're doing. And I've turned the outside down to the approximate diameter of our bushing. So once we have the whole board, we're going for right at one inch again, maybe plus about five ten thousandths. I'll need to turn down the very end of the bushing with a one degree taper to this diameter. I will need to part this off and then face this side to make it nice and flat. Okay, there she is all faced off and chamfered. This is gonna be nice. We'll take it out of the chuck here over to the bench and see how all the new parts look on the bar in an engine case. But just for comparison, here's what we have. Okay, let's see what it looks like on the bar. What a journey this has been. But look at that, no play. No more slop. This should really help. We should get better repeatability out of this. Looking forward to trying it out. Now we're not totally done. This is an oil hole in the original one. So get a hole in there. We need to put a hole in this one and tap it. It's gonna take the place of this old one here. And of course we need to put an oiling hole in this one. Oh, this is great. This is really, really great. I'm looking forward to trying this. What do you think, Rodeo? Hmm? What you think? Are you happy about this? You wanna see the new part? Come over here, see the new part. Isn't that cool? Yeah, thank you. I have a new toy in the drill press mill thingy thing here. This is gonna help me find the center of these bushings to drill the hole in. I've already punched the hole uh, there. All right, so we're looking for this indicator here to point straight up. So I need to go in a little bit. I'm just turning the hand wheel down here. Slide the table forward some and I think that lines up. There we are, right on it. Yeah, that's a good start. Let's go the rest of the way through. Keep cleaning things out and dipping the tap back in some cutting fluid. Oops. I want a dog point down here. I don't want this little cup. You see this on the end of bolts a lot, something about the way they're manufactured. That might dig into the bar and that's not what I want. I'm, I'm gonna make it flat. Here's the big end bushing, and I, I've done one additional modification to it. If you can see down in there, there's a ring going around it. I've ground an oil channel into the bushing because on a test run, it galled 
it seized up on the bar kind of messed the bar up a little bit i was able to clean that up so it now runs smooth and true again but i thought okay i'm running tighter tolerances that's probably why that happened so i need to improve the oiling and so that's what i did i ran that channel all the way around kind of like we see on the outside of the later bearings for the cross drilled crankshafts and we see on the inside of the earlier bearings for the non cross drilled crankshafts. By the way, make sure you got the right one for whatever your crank looks like. Anyway, I kind of took that idea and have improved the oiling and I think that's going to work for me. I didn't have a problem with this bushing, but I'm going to go ahead and cut that groove in it also. If there's any kind of a trick to this, it's using a cutting blade on a Dremel that's already been pretty much used up. That way it's small enough to fit there in that hole. Then just try and be real steady. If I had thought of this soon enough, it would have been pretty easy to cut this groove when it was on the lathe instead of this hackery that I'm doing now, but this will do the job. This should be much better. No play in it, and it, it just glides. So that's what I'm looking for. Of course, this will act as a reservoir when we're doing the cut, so we'll fill this all the way up, and it'll feed through and just spill out. So I'm happy with that. Over here, we're in great shape. I think we're good to move cautiously forward anyway. We'll deal with problems as they come. <laughs> That's all we've been doing anyway. Where we left off was a real bummer. I was on the wrong side of a line on the micrometer and ended up cutting this number two main bearing bore way, way bigger than I intended to. By messing up my reading, I sailed right past the second oversize and went all the way to the third oversize here. Now this really put me in a tough spot with bearings. A big part of what we're doing here is trying to keep the cost really, really low. That's why almost everything is coming from a swap meet and the old parts stash and we're doing a lot of work to refurbish things. I could just buy a new set of bearings, break them up, that's 50 bucks. But I'm gonna stay true to the project here and hold out for bearings from a swap meet, some kind of a bargain deal. We're making progress, but we're kind of at a stopping point on this case. But there's another case hanging out. Had a ton of end play and got disassembled. It's going to need the second oversize. Let's take a look at that one. I think that'll be a way forward here in the short term. And if we end up building two engines, whatever. The more, the merrier, but let's just keep moving forward. So we just need a successful line bore here. I haven't made any terrible mistakes on this one, and that's cool. And... As far as the next oversize is concerned, I have an old crusty set of bearings that will work. This is the second oversize, so here it's in millimeters. The external size of these bearings is one millimeter or 40 thousandths of an inch-ish. It's actually 0.39 something, but uh, internal is for a 20 over crank, and I actually have one. It's a little bit crusty too, so that kind of fits what we're doing here. This is a single relief case that's 10 millimeter studs. We've got some work to do here. This is this is a good candidate for a low buck engine build with crusty parts like what we're doing. So I'm feeling good about this. I'm gonna have to nail it on the line bore. So I'm gonna measure these, do my calculations, set the cutters, and we're gonna try it. We're gonna go for it. chance to get a visual of these cutters to make sure they're facing the correct direction. I really need this to work. I made this to do a little bit better job of knocking the bearings into place. It's machined so it fits flat against the bushing. It's aluminum so it's not going to mar the bushing. All right, things still feeling kind of good, snug. Okay. I believe one of two things will happen here initially. 
it'll go all the way through taking a light cut or it'll do that until it locks up and I hope the ladder does not happen. Cross your fingers. Lock the feed unit. Here we go. I probably didn't use the right metal for the job, but this galling, I hope it goes away maybe a silicon bronze bushing or something similar to that. The best, best, best thing to do would be to figure out this issue before trying another cut. We made it all the way through. Now it's just a matter of uh, taking the measurements and see if we're where we need to be. Fingers crossed, folks. That actually looked a touch small to me. Taking four measurements, front and rear of the bearing saddle, horizontally and vertically. All right, let's see what's going on with number two. This has been such a journey. But we still have two more bearings to go. Let's check number three and number four. This one's a little tricky because we have to go so far down in there. After countless test cuts, Let's test this one last bearing here. Finally. <laughs> Finally, we have a line board a case at Haptic Garage. Successfully, I'm pretty sure. More details on that in a second, but check out this swap meet where we find another engine core for our project, except that it's in a car and we have to drop it on the spot if we're gonna get it home. Click now and we'll see you there. Next steps are pulling the case apart and seeing what the bearings feel like. This case actually does need a thrust cut. This is the Hard Times engine build. See y'all soon.